Welcome to session two. We just talked about Germany during the pre-World War I era, meaning before World War I, and we saw the imperialistic, nationalistic, and militaristic actions that Germany was taking. Let's go ahead to the next slide to see what exactly happens in Germany once the country becomes united. So the interesting thing about Germany is that Germany has not always been a united country. Originally, Germany was pretty much made up of 39 different territories that did not get along. So most of us are familiar with Germany, Germany being this big united country. But before it was united, it actually used to be a bunch of tiny little territories, we can see them here in yellow, who were German, but they were not united, and they didn't want to unite, and they didn't want to cooperate, and they kind of just did their own thing. This all changed when a guy by the name of Otto von Bismarck, and his face is kind of cut off right here, but we can see him a little bit, when this guy, Otto von Bismarck, came into the scene. Basically what happens is Germany became a united country under the efforts of political figure, meaning politician or government worker, Otto von Bismarck. Now it's important to note that Otto von Bismarck, he was not the king of Germany. He was just a regular government official who worked for the king. So here's the king, the king also known as Kaiser. Kaiser is a fancy way of saying king. The Kaiser was the ruler of Germany, but he had a really hard time getting his country, getting the different territories united until Otto von Bismarck, one of his government workers, basically stepped in and basically forced all 39 of those rival little German places to unite. Now, after Germany was united, we're going to see that it starts to practice even more imperialism. So go ahead and fill in that first bubble with an I for imperialism, because this is going to be an imperialistic action we're going to see Germany take. After it was united, Germany's desires for colonial, meaning victim land, grew. And so before World War I even started, we're going to see Germany kind of stretch in and try to take a little bit of territory from Russia, a little bit of territory from some of its neighbors south, like the Austrian-Hungarian area. We already know that they took some territory from France. They're pretty much land hungry. Other great powers began to worry about the balance of power. Not only is Germany coming into Europe and trying to take territory in Europe, but Germany also sailed to Africa and to Asia and to Latin America and started even to try to take territory there. And the more and more territory Germany tried to imperialize and take, the more and more worried other powerful countries got. Germany knew that it needed to protect itself from war. Germany knew that its imperialistic actions were going to pretty much create lots of enemies against it. But Germany knew that it was not strong enough to create a military. It was pretty much a brand new united country, had just been united by Otto von Bismarck, so they didn't really have a nice, big, standing, unified army, and so they would not be militarily strong. They could not rely on militarism. And so instead, we're going to see them practice alliances. Hey, if we can't defend ourselves militarily, then maybe we can gain big, strong friends who can go ahead and defend us. So I'd like you to annotate this last circle at the bottom. I'd like you to go ahead and put an A here for alliances because we're going to see Germany is going to achieve the protection it needs by seeking alliances. So they're going out and conquering lots of territory, and they're making lots of enemies while they're conquering territory, and so Germany's going to try to find some friends who can protect it from the enemies it's creating. Now, we took a pretty in-depth look at Germany. Let's go ahead and take a look at France. And while we're looking at what France was doing before World War I, I'm also going to go ahead and ask you to try to pinpoint if France is practicing imperialism, if France is practicing alliances, or if they're practicing nationalism or militarism. Now this time around, I'm not going to actually tell you what they're practicing. 
I'm going to push you to try to figure that on your own. But we are going to be finding three of the main background causes here on this particular side while we take a look at pre-World War I France. Make sure you annotate France. So let's take a look at France's actions. Demoralized, meaning heartbroken, upset, also bankrupt and ruined after war with Germany, we're going to find that pretty much France had very few options. They desperately sought allies against Germany. So they have been hurt after this war, and now they realize that they're not strong enough to protect themselves anymore, and so they are going to go also looking for allies. Go ahead and take a look at this bullet point again. Desperately sought allies against Germany. And go ahead and annotate which main background cause you think France is using. Are they using militarism, alliances, imperialism, or nationalism? Put the letter of your choice now. Now, the government officials in France, they pretty much got blamed for the loss of the war. They were not only blamed for the failure of the Franco-Prussian War, but they were also fired and replaced by a new French government. A lot of times when a country loses a war, if you're the leader in power and the war got lost under your shift, you're most likely going to get fired, replaced, or there's probably going to be a revolution because people will normally blame their political leaders for military failures. And that's what happened here in France. Now, the new military officials, the new ones that came into power, they decided that they needed to really focus on France strengthening the military. This new military official government believed, hey, We've just been defeated by Germany, and our military is weak right now, but that doesn't mean we should just give up on building our military. We need to focus on building up our military again. And so this new government will focus on strengthening the military power of France. Go ahead here in this circle and annotate which of the main background causes France is practicing according to this bullet point. Again, you're going to place either an M, an A, an I, or an N in this circle. Now that the nation's goal was to create a strong army and seek alliances. This particular bullet point here is going to be giving us an idea about two main background causes France is practicing. Let's take a look at this. Now, the nation's goal was to create a strong army and seek alliances. You should have placed an M for militarism in this circle and an A for alliances. You should have placed an M for militarism in this circle. You should have placed an A for alliances in this circle. So we can see that on this page, before World War I has even started, France is focusing a lot on militarism and France is focusing a lot on alliances. Let's take a look at what the British are doing before World War I. Now, if we take a look, we know that Britain is basically this small little tiny island nation. We know that the British industrialized first, so the British were able to advance first, which gave them a huge advantage in imperializing. And because they had this advantage in industrializing, we know that the British, we can see their color right here, the British were able to conquer large territories of France because of this early industrialization. Well, what were they doing before World War I? Great Britain was the most powerful and industrialized pre-World War I nation. They felt largely protected by the English Channel. This is really important. This is another area where geography plays a huge impact on history. We can see here this small body of water. This is called the English Channel. And we see that the English Channel divides Great Britain from the rest of Europe. Now we know that World War II, or I'm sorry, World War I, is going to start down here in the Balkan Peninsula and then is eventually going to spread to the rest of Europe. Great Britain is going to see this Balkan Peninsula issue erupt into war and eventually spread into all of Europe. But Great Britain feels kind of safe from this war at first 
because of this English Channel waterway. Because of this English Channel waterway, Great Britain thought that the war would never get to it. But they were wrong. The war will eventually impact them. And when Great Britain starts to realize that this World War I is going to impact them, they realize this when they start to see how much power Germany is gaining from imperialism and alliances. And they start to feel threatened by Germany. Great Britain realizes that this English Channel waterway will not be enough of a protective barrier to protect it from aggressively growing Germany. Britain didn't like the growth of Germany's navy. Britain didn't like the fact that Germany here, shown in pink, started to go into Africa and take some African territory. And so Great Britain is going to decide to try to develop more weapons than Germany. And so what's going to happen is we're going to have a marine. Marine means ocean. We're going to have an ocean arms, meaning an ocean weapons race between both nations, between Great Britain and Germany. So Great Britain feels threatened. Germany wants to continue expanding. These two countries realize that they're enemies. And so both of these countries are going to start focusing on creating more and more arms, which means weapons, but specifically ocean, water weapons. Go ahead and give me a letter here to indicate what action Great Britain is practicing in this bullet point. Are they practicing M for militarism, A for alliances, I for imperialism, or N for nationalism. Now, aside from trying to build more and more water weapons, Great Britain is also going to start to look for allies. Great Britain is going to realize that building more and more weapons isn't enough. They need to have some friends on their side. Go ahead and provide a letter here for this last circle, indicating what type of main background cause Great Britain, Great Britain is practicing in this bullet point. I'm not going to share the answers for these two because hopefully by now you kind of figured out how to annotate those bullet points. If you need help on what should have been written in these circles, please raise your hand and check in with the teacher or turn to a neighbor to see what their annotations are. Now let's take a look at this last bullet point. Britain is upset with German colonial growth in Africa and beyond, like I mentioned, which is why Great Britain is going to seek to gain more ocean weapons and is going to seek more allies. Now this map here is going to help us understand the last great power of this lecture, which is Russia. Please make sure that you're annotating your map to go ahead and pinpoint the following locations. The first location is location one. Russia is a very large country, and Russia today takes up some of Europe, but is also in some of Asia. So Russia is one of the few countries located on two continents, the Asian continent and the European continent. We're going to be taking a look at Russia, and we're also going to take a look at section two, which is Japan. And we're going to see how these two countries are going to interact with one another and have some tensions that are going to ultimately lead to World War I. Now, Japan was not a great power. So Japan is not the focus of today's lecture, and Japan will not be a focus at all this unit. But Russia is definitely a great power. So we will be focusing on Russia today, and we will be focusing on Russia for the rest of this unit on World War I. Now, these two countries are going to have an issue with territory piece number three. This large territory encircled by this purple border, this is known as the Far East. And we're going to find that both Russia and Japan are going to come to conflict over this territory known as the Far East. Our time is up for session two. Go ahead and hit pause for this video. Jump to the description section for this video in order to find the link for session three. When you find the link for session three, you can jump back into the notes for the unit 5.5 lecture.